Now, we've been going back to basics as I've been teaching you, praise God, for the last uh, uh, month or so, praise God, going back to some basic things, although always the Lord gives us more. We've added on to some things as we've done so. Amen. But we've been talking about, praise God, faith from varying directions. And once again, faith has five elements. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You hear with your natural ear, and then hear with your heart. Then, of course, comes by receiving. James 1, 21 says, Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Then there's the believing, number three, praise God. Of course, that's how you got saved. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, the next one, of course, speaking with the mouth, acknowledgement or confession is made unto salvation. And finally, James 1, the fifth one is acting. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now today, we're going to talk about the very first element, praise God, and some would argue the most important element. And that is number one, hearing. Because all the other ones, receiving, believing, speaking, acting, none of them come to pass unless you first find out, praise God, what it is I'm supposed to believe and speak and do and act on by hearing. Now, Romans chapter 8, verse 14 tells us here, For as many as are led, and the word to underline is the word led, led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. And so God wants us to be led by him and those acting like his children, let him do the leading and they do the following. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we read in verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. God freely will make known to you his will, purposes, plans, and directions if you seek him. Scripture said if you seek him, you shall find him. If you knock, you find that door is open. Then when you take a look at chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians, and verse 16 says, Know ye not that you are the Spirit of God, uh, you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And so inside of us is the Spirit of God who will do the leading, who will reveal to us the deep things of God. Hallelujah. He is in, indeed there. Then, of course, in Hebrews chapter 10, as I'm just running through these quickly, in Hebrews chapter 10, we'll take a look at verse 38. Praise God, because... People say, and I can remember my spiritual father, they used to attack him, saying, why are you always teaching on the subject of faith? Well, first of all, that was his assignment from the Lord for the whole that generation. Thank God. It had to be restored back to that generation. Amen. But secondarily, you can't do anything in the Bible without it. You can't get saved. You can't get healed. You can't get delivered. You can't get nothing. Praise God. Hebrews 10, 38 says, praise the Lord, the just, those have been declared righteous, that's if you're born again, shall live by, or as the Greek says, a life has but a lifetime of, by faith. So if you are someone who is born again, you are expected, this is the way in which you live. Of course, the Greek word for faith is the word pistis, which means to believe and trust and have confidence, rely on and be assurance. He goes on to say in his verse, if any man draws back, draws back from what? Living by faith. God says, my soul shall have no pleasure in that individual. And I want God to have pleasure through my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Then in verse 6 of the same chapter, or excuse me, next chapter, chapter 11, he says, but without pistis, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the word please means to gratify him. For he that approaches or comes to God must. That's it. He must believe that he is, and that's, he is refers to the now and the present. So you must believe that God is all that he says he is now, just like we've been singing. He is healer, he is provider, he is deliverer, praise God, all those things. And 
that he is a rewarder, which is referring to the future tense of them who diligently seek him. So it's not just important, amen, that you believe God is now. You must believe that your future as you follow him will be what he said. See, So this verse has two actions to it. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the apostle Paul, of course, who was the foundational apostle that the Lord used to build his New Testament church, said in Romans 10, 8, praise God. He said, this is what I preach. He said, the word of faith, which we preach, the word of belief and trust, confidence, belief, and assurance of God. Now, amen. This is all important because of those five elements, of course, the first is hearing, because faith can only be exercised where the will of God is known. So if you don't know that you know that you know that you know what God's will is, and when the scripture used the word will, that word in Greek also means choice, okay, amen, there is God's choices for your life. And then there's your own. Amen. Most Christians don't really want God's choice. Most Christians really want their own. I don't care if you don't say amen. They really want their own. They want the blessings of God, but they want their own choice. Okay. Amen. And you hear this word choice all over the place in the media about my body, my choice, my this, my that. But a real believer, where Jesus is really their Lord, wants his choice. Now, you say, well, why would you say that about believers? Well, Jesus said in the parable of the sower, the very first parable that Jesus taught, amen. He said it was the key parable. You had four different people hear the word, and only one of them received and acted on it. Three out of four were not good ground but they all heard. So the question is, what about you? Is it God's choice, your choice, or a mixture? But getting God's choice or God's will, first of all, comes from, from, from hearing. Now, throughout the Bible, God spoke to many famous men and women of God. I mean, praise the Lord. Adam, he spoke, we read reading about the first man, God spoke to him. Even Cain, God spoke to Cain. God spoke to Noah. God spoke to Abraham. God spoke to Moses. God spoke to Joshua. And praise God. God spoke to the apostle Peter. God spoke to the apostle Paul and many, 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 many others. In other words, God speaking and people hearing starts from Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, all the way to Revelation. For those who take the position that I don't believe God speaks or that God's not interested in what you do here on the earth, you obviously have not read the scripture. Amen. Or you don't believe the scripture because the scripture from front to back, you have God talking all the time. Amen. He cannot He cannot hold you responsible for his will and he won't tell you what his will is. Amen. So he must be speaking unto us. And I don't really understand why people have problems with saying, well, I don't know what you mean God speaks to human beings. Of course he does. Even, even my car will talk to you today. <laughs> that man can build an inanimate object like a, like a computer in, inside of all kinds of vehicles. Even your house will talk to you. Yeah. Why do you think that it would be difficult for God to talk to his creation? Yeah. Yeah. Of course he does. Amen. Come on, give me three hallelujahs, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now turn to St. John chapter 12. Not only did all those people that I just mentioned, praise God, you can read all kinds of stories in the word of God where God spoke to them, but even the Lord Jesus himself, he makes the statement in St. John chapter 12, verse 49. He says, for I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment. What commandment, Jesus, did the Father give you? What I should say, what I should speak, and I know by his commandment is life everlasting. Amen. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. 
So Jehovah, God the Father, spoke to the Lord Jesus and told Jesus what his choice was on the earth to carry out that mission. So it's everywhere. You can't go anywhere without the hearing. Hearing is fundamental, praise God, to the life of faith. Now, some of the ways that God gives us his choices, praise the Lord, God speaks to us, amen, is through these methods. You might want to write some of these down. The Holy Spirit, of course, speaking to us, sometimes through visions, dreams we'll read, angels, impressing upon the human spirit, through the mouth of prophets, obviously, the written word is God speaking to you. Peace of God in your spirit. Another one that we had just a few moments ago. Tongues with interpretation. That's God speaking unto you too. Hallelujah. In the public assembly. Amen. Uh, amen. We even have instances in the scripture where demons spoke to people. Remember in Acts chapter 19? Special miracles were done at the hands of the Apostle Paul over there in verse 11-ish or so. And then there was uh, seven sons of Sceva. They saw Paul past, casting out devils. and uh, Amen. They were taking the handkerchiefs from Paul's body and laying them on six folks. That anointing went from Paul's body because the anointing is transferable and went, out and went from Paul's body into that cloth and then into the sick people and drove out demons and caused them to be healed in Acts 19. Seven sons of Sceva saw all this, and then they said, you can read it over there, and, and, and they said, they found a man who was demon-possessed, and they said, come out of this man in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches. The demon spoke up and said, spoke through the man. It said, spoke through the man's voice, but it was the demon spoke through the man. Amen. And the demon said, Jesus, I know. I know Paul too. And who in the world is you? And then the Bible said the demon in the man and the man with the demon jumped on all seven of them. Beat the tire out of them till they were stripped naked and bleeding and running away. But the point that I'm making is that speaking and hearing operating in the realm of the spirit. Amen. And in this natural, spiritual, both sides world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let me put a caution up here, first of all, right now. In fact, I put a double red exclamation point on my notes here. Okay. Let me say right now, we don't seek those things I listed. We don't seek voices. Hallelujah. And everything must be judged. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Amen. I want to make this point right here, right now. Praise God. Before I get into this lesson deeper. 1 Corinthians 14, 29 says here, let the prophet speak two or three, let the others judge. Judge by what? First of all, by the word. The word is always the vehicle by which every utterance, everything is always. If, if you don't believe the Bible is God's word, we ain't got nothing else to say to you. That's why I start out, this is my Bible. The Bible is the truth. It is God speaking to us. Hallelujah. So it's judged by the book. That word judged that means it is discerned by others whether or not it's really God speaking because even though God is perfect, the vehicles which he uses are imperfect. Anybody here imperfect? Let me see your hand. See? So the vehicles in which he uses are imperfect. Amen. And so sometimes we have to discern to make sure that's God. Make sure that ain't you. Oh, I'm preaching better. I'm getting amen. 
So we read here, glory to God, just to be certain. Also take a look at 1 John chapter 4, turn over there. Amen. 1 John 4, 1 says this, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try, which means test them. The spirits, test them about what? Whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And so there is always a testing about these things. Amen. And the word is the vehicle by which we authenticate whether or not something is or is not. Amen. Then one more thing before I really get into how to hear. Uh, amen. You also can do things in human beings typically who love God will do things with their own assumptions of things. I mean, turn to Acts chapter 1. And even though their heart may be right, your heart can be right and your head can be wrong. Your heart can be right and your methodology be wrong. Even from some of the most famous people in the Bible. I'm going to talk about one here just for a quick moment. One by the name of Peter, powerful man of God pillar of the church of Lord Jesus Christ, apostle to the Jews, amen. One who God used to raise people from the dead. I mean, serious man, right? Praise God. But you need to understand the Bible said that these were humans just like us. It says in James they, that they are individuals, praise God, who have like passions like us. In other words, they get angry like we get. They laugh like we do. They make good judgments like we do. They make bad judgments like we do. In other words, and God, particularly those in the scripture, this is the first time through. So when you read the early church, what's called early church, you don't want to base your church after the early church. Why? Because that's the church in infancy. That church is going to develop and mature, at least it's supposed to. It's supposed to develop and mature, praise God. Amen. Now, there's things you learn from it. Hallelujah. But suppose, and same thing with these, these, these guys. You, you read the Apostle Paul, Paul made mistakes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Paul's ministry was about 30 years, yes. 30, 35 years, was how long his ministry was. I've been in ministry longer than Paul was. Okay, amen. Yes. And there's a learning process if you study the book of Acts. There's a learning process with Paul as he develops. Yes. Glory to God. And so was true, the others, including Peter. So here on the day of Pentecost, of course, they're in that upper room just before Pentecost starts. Judas, of course, has, has uh, killed himself. And we'll pick up here Acts chapter 1, verse 20. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let, let his, and we now know we're talking about Judas, let his habitation be desolate, let another man dwell therein, and his office, is the word Bishop Rick, his office or his charge or his calling, let another take. And so what Peter is referencing Psalm 109, verse 8. And so Peter did go to the book, and he did find out that there's supposed to be a replacement for Judas. But keep reading. Wherefore, of these men, underline these were these, which have accompanied with us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until that same day that he was taken up from us, must one, another place on the line, be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Now, I have to tell you that Peter's got a whole bunch of assumptions here. First of all, he's assuming that God's going to replace Judas only from these men only from those who've been with him all the time. Amen. That God's only going to take one to do it. Amen. And it's been a witness with him. Who said? Scripture didn't say that. Where did that come from? Came from Peter's mind. Peter assumed that. Well, if God's going to replace Judas, it's got to be from our bunch. It must only be one. It must have been somebody with us from nearly the beginning. And he was totally wrong. Because God chose somebody who was not with them from the beginning. Somebody they would have never chosen. Someone who was not involved in witnessing with them. 
but it seemed right to Judas. Amen. And a lot of times we will move forward with things that seem right. This must be, seems to me, it's the way God would go. Seems to me it's the way, the way it would happen. And it's nothing but presumption. Keep reading. Because that presumption led to some strange stuff. Verse 23. And they, see that word they? They did it. Didn't say, didn't say anything about the Holy Ghost or God. They appointed two, Joseph called Bersabus, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed. Now they pray. <laughs> and said, Thou Lord, which knoweth the heart of all men, show whether of these two you have chosen. We given you two choices, Lord. You either choose this man or you choose that man. Now, how many times have we done that? The course that we see or that we understand. Keep reading. Now it really gets strange. That he may take part of this ministry and apostleship for which Judas my transgressions fell that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles, and that was the last time you ever heard of Matthias. <laughs> the presumption led them to, to say God's choice had to be these two, and we're going to cast lots to see which one it is. Really? That's as bad as people going down there, downtown Detroit. I know Christians don't go down there to the casino. I know that now that the slot machine said, maybe the Lord provides all my needs. I know that now that the crap table. Right? I hear a whole lot of laughing, but... Uh, I ain't never been down there. My God supplies all my need. That goes for the lottery tickets in your pocket too. Woo! Hey man, good preacher. Woo! That man, that man is preaching. Go, bitch. Peter made a wrong choice. God chose a man, all right, but his name, he wasn't with them at all. His name was the Apostle Paul. And he was the replacement for Judas. Amen. Now, but God does speak. And he speaks to his children. You are a tripart being. You are a spirit being. And the Bible says God is a spirit. And they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth or, or, or from the word. You have a soul, the soul is the very mind, will, and seat of your emotions. And you live in a physical body. Amen. We're all familiar with the body. Medical science treats the body. A little bit, they might treat the soul a little. They, do no, they know nothing about the spirit. But yet man is a tripart being, praise God. Now, Hallelujah. All right, Lord, which, which way you want me to go with this? All right, turn to Acts chapter 5. Now, in Acts chapter 5, we read here, uh, praise the Lord. They're going to have great miracles in verse 16, and they're going to have, of course, multitudes out of the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folk and them that were vexed with unclean spirits. Everybody was healed. Then, then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him, which is the second of Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth, and the angel said, Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning. Now, it doesn't tell us here, praise God, just that an angel was involved in it. Amen. 
But one of the ways, don't forget what the scripture said. He said, watch how you entertain strangers for some have entertained angels unawares. But obviously they understood that it was an angel, praise God, and that a uh, will of God was put forth and of course great things happened after that. But I want you to notice, praise God, not only was there a word, there was instruction and then they followed that instruction. When they heard that, it said they'd entered into the temple. In Acts chapter 8, we're going to turn over there. Praise God. Praise God. Acts chapter 8, Philip, amen. In verse 29, Philip is a man in his own business. Verse 29, the Spirit said unto Philip, so the Holy Ghost, amen, Spirit, Spirit of God, said unto him, Go near, join yourself to this chariot. Philip ran thither to him, heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understand what you read of. He said, Now, if somebody don't explain it to me, I don't know. Philip then, of course, went and explained to the man. Finally, it ended up in verse 37, If thou believest with all thine heart, you mayeth. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He commanded the chariot to stand still. They went down both unto the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. They would come up out of the water. The Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. The Europe saw him no more. The eunuch saw him no more, and Philip went on his way. Well, amen. Philip heard the Lord say, minister to this man. He ministers to this man. The man gets saved. Philip's going to have a miracle take place. He's going to be transported. This man is going to take back this message of faith back to his country, to his queen, and it's going to cause a revival to break out over the entire country. But it started with Philip hearing and then acting. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Acts chapter 9, here's the replacement for Judas. Saul, of course, is somebody they would have never, never thought would be Judas' replacement. God will use people sometimes and attach you with people you would never have anything to do with. We don't tell God who, what, when, why, and how. We just obey. Saul breaking out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest, desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. Amen. And as he journeyed to come near Syria, Damascus, suddenly there shone round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul said, who art you, supreme authority? He said, Lord. He got it right then. But I want you to notice, he was a heathen who was out there seeking to kill Christians. You mean to tell me God will speak to heathen? Yeah. He spoke to all you. You were once a heathen. I was definitely a heathen. Hello, somebody. Amen. God speaks. He will speak to anyone who will listen. In fact, we pray that God speaks to some people. Now, we can't make them listen. We can't make them receive, believe, speak, and act. But we, he will speak to them if we ask them to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Speak to loved ones. Speak to husbands and wives. Hallelujah. My wife says all the time. Amen. Rather, you heard her last Sunday when she beat me up. <laughs> My secretary this morning brought both our calendars today. She said, here's hers, here's yours. And I said, I won't be doing no scribbling. <laughs> give me man, give me man. She said, you know, she won't argue with me. Okay. She'll pray and ask God to talk to me. Yeah. And you did hear her, hear her tell you. She said, he will do what the Lord tells him. Yeah. And it's true. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So she saved all the must and fuss, and she just, just cut out the middle man and go right to God. Yeah. And God's on her side say, you do this. Shout amen, 
Amen, somebody. Amen. Well, we, we, we read down what Jesus said. Praise God. He's going to speak to a man by the name. Well, let me finish here with verse 8. Well, Paul's trembling and astonished. Well, what do you want me to do? See, and that's the question here, hearing. See, that's why we're going through this exercise. What, Lord, do you want me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Get up, go into the city. It shall be told thee what thou must do. You notice the Lord didn't answer his question fully. Right from the start, the Lord said, Now you go into the city, and it'll be told you. Many of us would have been, Well, I'm here. See, there are faith is not getting the whole role all at once so I know what to do and where to step and when to do it and how to do it. It is a walk. You take a step because you, you received instruction. Hallelujah. And I can tell you from doing this for over four decades, you get the second step only after you took the first. Amen. Well, now God's working on something. Now, he's also going to speak to somebody else. He's going to speak about it to a man by the name of Ananias, verse 10. It's a certain, certain disciple of Damascus also named Ananias. And to him said, the Lord, know how, in a vision. The Lord spoke to Ananias. And he spoke to Ananias in a vision, which is, praise God, hallelujah, being able to see, amen, in the realm of the spirit. And he said, Ananias. And I said, I'm here. Notice Ananias recognized who it was. Even Saul recognized it was the Lord. You think these unbelievers don't know? Yes, they do. Uh, they, may not want, they may not want to follow him because they want to do their own thing. He read. And the Lord said unto him, get up. Going to go down the straight street, going to the house of Judas, Saul of Tarsus is going to be there. And he's praying. Notice what Saul's doing. Saul obeyed what he was told. He went into the city and he found himself in this house on straight street. So all right from the beginning, he's learning how to hear and receive and obey. Look at your neighbor and say, hear, receive, obey. receive, obey. He gets led by the Lord to this house, and then God leads Ananias to the same house. Praise God. And tells him the man's praying. All these are gifts of the Spirit, word of knowledge, so forth. He's seen in the vision a man named Ananias coming in, putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Ananias then argued with the Lord. Anybody ever done that? He said, Lord, many people told me how much evil this man did down there to the saints at Jerusalem. And he came up here, he got authority to arrest anybody who calls on you. And the Lord said, you go your way. You never win arguments with God. You might as well stop. He said, go your way. He is a chosen vessel unto me. And Ananias never considered that. He never considered that God would take this evil man and then use him. See, you're not so smart. Hey, stop thinking you're so smart. I can figure this out. No, you can't. You don't have enough information. You don't have enough brain power. You don't have enough data about the future. So if you don't have all that, what must I do? How about trust? Hear and obey. So he goes on to say, he's seen in the vision. So God gave Paul a vision. A man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Of course, we read. So go thy way. He's a chosen vessel unto me. He's there to bear my name before Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. I will show him, not you. So you have to mind our own business. Ooh, I'm preaching better. I'm getting, they ain't getting no amens out here. But I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Ananias then gets up, goes down the straight street, enters into the house, put his hands on him and said, Brother Saul. 
God said, you're my brother, you are my brother. The Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou came and sent me, that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's exactly what happened. Glory to God. Now I'll turn to Acts 22 because I'm going to run through just a couple more. Then I'm going to share some things with you to help you with hearing. Now when we talk about hearing, we've already seen it could be by vision. Elsewhere, later on, I'm sure I'll be at this uh, the next following Sunday that I'm doing ministry here. Praise God Sunday. Praise God. We'll, we'll see about dreams and other ways. Praise God. But when we're ever talking about hearing God, we're never talking about hearing him with these two ornaments on the side of your head. You don't hear God say, say again. You don't hear God with these. God is a spirit and what are you? Amen. Your spirit has spiritual ears. Now God may use an outside source. Like I said, he may use an angel. He may use a prophet of God or a man or woman of God. He may use someone on the outside. Amen. But hearing God really is not a function of this. It's a function of this on the inside. And there are things you do to make yourself more sensitive to that. Where you can hear that voice more clearly. And I hear in Acts chapter 22, we read here also, amen. Paul kind of recounts the story in verse 7. He said, I fell into the ground, I heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto, unto him, I am Jesus of Nazareth, who you persecuted. And they that were with him saw the light. They were afraid, but they didn't hear the voice of him. So the only person that heard the voice was Saul. Now that happened to me one time. Uh, we were flying in our aircraft. We were flying from Atlanta, and we were flying to Phoenix. Uh, amen. And Jesse Duplantis was with us on the aircraft. We were heading out that way. Uh, amen. And the Lord, honey, if I got this right, and the Lord, it was either, it was either Mississippi or it was Phoenix. Forget now, it was a long time ago. Those churches are, long. those churches are twenty five years old or more. But anyway, praise God. So I'm on the aircraft, uh, and the Lord said, oh, yeah. And the Lord said to me, open up a church here in Mississippi, in Jackson, Mississippi. And I said, I turned to I said, Jesse, did you hear it? Because it sounded loud to me. I said, Jesse, did you hear that? And Jesse said, hear what? I said, the Lord said, open a church in Jackson, Mississippi. He said, I didn't hear nothing, but I did. Just as plain as day. I heard it in here. Of course, that church is over 25 years old. Today, hallelujah, amen. We then obeyed what was told us. Well, so they didn't hear anything either. And I said, what, what shall I do? And the Lord said, arise, go into Damascus, and there shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for these to do. So you read down to verse 18, a amen. There's going to be a situation there with the apostle prophet. Go back to verse 17. And it came to pass, and when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple. Now, I also want you to notice, he's in prayer. So he's going to obey. He's going to go back to Jerusalem where he came from. Amen. He's praying in the temple, and I was in a trance. And saw him, saw Jesus, saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, but they will not receive thy, thy testimony concerning me. Verse 21, he said, Depart, for I will send thee far from here unto the Gentiles. And so the Lord's going to give him where he was going to go, who he was going to minister to, and the Lord was going to save his life because they were going to execute him if he stayed there. Yeah. Now, he didn't know that, but the Lord knew that. Now, he did the same thing with Joseph, remember? Joseph and Mary. And the Lord spoke to Joseph and said, Get you hence, 
gather up the young child and Mary and flee into Egypt because Herod's going to kill him if he stays. Right? Joseph obeys, gathers them up, go to Egypt until Herod died, and then the Lord said, now he's dead, now you can go back, and he wound up in Nazareth. See, hearing can save your life, and not hearing can cause you to lose it. I am standing here today because I heard. There have been multiple attempts on my life, and I am standing here today because I heard each time. Are you listening to me? Learning to hear can be the difference between living your life fully all the way to 120 or leaving here early. He to have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit's saying to the church. Well, in Acts chapter 13, let's turn over there. Praise God. Give me three more praise the Lord, somebody. I'm not even denting this, praise God. I'm going to be at this for a while because I'm almost out of time. Verse 1, now that we're in the church, that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, that was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetroph, and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord, underline that. So you, can, you have to ask the question, well, how do you minister to the Lord? God inhabits what? praises of our people. We did a lot of ministering to the Lord today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said. Now, we don't know if he said through the prophets that was here, but amen. It was said in a way that they understood it. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have past tense called them. When they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them. They sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia. From thence they sailed to Cyprus. Amen. Now, let me give you my own personal testimony about this hearing because next session I do on Sunday morning on this, praise God, I'm going to flush this out a whole lot more. But my own personal, personal testimony about this was, the first time that I remember hearing the Lord speak to me, that I remember it. Now, I'm not saying he didn't speak to me before because when I was eight years old, when I was in elementary school, praise God, I've told you before, one of my classmates was a woman by the name of Andrine Steele. She's a minister of the gospel, she's a graduate of our Bible school. Used to work for me at the Atlanta church at one time. Amen. Her and I was born on the same day, the whole nine yards, to sit in the classroom together at McCullough Elementary School. She, she had a diary. She wrote in that diary, and now, now that she works for me and we're grown and it's, you know, 35 years later, one day she comes up to me and she pulls out the diary. And it's all dogged-eared and yellowed and all that, but she had it right there. Keith Butler said to me, I was eight years old, I'm going to pastor a big church in Detroit. I was eight. Now, my spirit knew that. My head didn't know that. But the first time that I remember the Lord spake to me, I was 15 years old. My mother was in the hospital, and this is now in a different location, the same hospital as this, but it's in a different location. My mother was in the hospital, and I'm 15, and you know, you got a learner's permit, but I'm driving without anybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and I remember when I pulled into the parking lot, I pulled into the parking lot and turned left, and I heard the Lord say, I'm a teenager. I heard him just as plain as day. He said, I have called you to preach. And I yelled out, no! <laughs> I mean, it was, there was no doubt about it. In fact, I, I put that car in park, looked in the back seat and said, who's back there? Now, it was... It wasn't with these ears. It was here. But it was, it was so distinguished that I had that reaction to it. Now, that's the first time I remember that. Now, I was 15 years of age. Well, praise God. Next time, of course, I'm going to get born again then a few years later. I'm going to get born again. 
And when I get born again, because this is about the rain, so I'll turn it off before it does. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, when I get married to Pastor Deborah, you know, I was engaged to her when I was 18 years old. So, praise God, I get married to Pastor Deborah, and she would tell you that I used to get under the dining room table and I'm praying in the spirit, praying in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost under that. I come home from work and I get under that table and pray in the Holy Ghost. And I'm praying, other, praying in other tongues under, under that table. And I'm praying about one thing. I want to know what is God's choice for the ministry and not my own. What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? And I had something happen to me that you saw happen on the stage, except it was just singly with, with me the first time. And, as, and I'm praying in the spirit, praying, on, on, uh, praying in other tongues, and then it welled up inside me like a fire. And I began to pray in tongues out of my mouth with a force, with a rapidity, with a anointing. I don't have the vocabulary to explain to you how it poured out of me. It was, no, it, was, it was like I was almost like, not true, but almost like I had no control. You always have control. It was almost like I had no control. I mean, it just poured out on me. And then, then the interpretation came behind it. And the Lord told me what I was to do, where I was to go. Amen. Under what circumstances? Well, and so when I heard that, so I started heading in that direction. But then I began to let my mind get involved. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because what the Lord was telling me to do was something that I didn't completely always get. I didn't totally mentally understand. It. Now, I, I knew then that you don't stand in a pulpit unless you have some training. You don't just get up behind this desk. James 3, 1 says, Be not many masters, but they receive greater condemnation, greater judgment. I knew, I, even then, I knew not just get up here. Somebody needs to train you. Now, the training, training doesn't call you, but the training makes sure you act like you've been called. Don't shut me down because I'm preaching good. Hallelujah. And so I had to sign a certain university, amen, Christian school, that I was going to go to. And I'm, now I'm at the little couch we have in this little apartment, and I'm praying again. Notice I kept, keep talking about praying. And I'm praying again the couch. And I heard the Lord's, and again it sounded almost, now there's only been about maybe nine or ten times that it sounds this loud to me, maybe nine or ten times in all these years. But it sounded this loud to me again. He said, I didn't tell you to go here. This place I'm talking about. He said, I told you to go, and then where I wound up going. And he said, past tense. And I don't remember hearing that before. So apparently he's spoken to me, but I missed it. Something else you can do too. Aren't you glad that God will continue to talk to you? <laughs> he said, I told you past tense. This is what I said. Oh, so praise God. I did it, went to Bible school. We had miracles happen. After I became a pastor, praise the Lord. Amen. Pastor in this church 43 years ago. Amen. And we're, and we're looking for our very first building. We had outgrown our little storefront. Amen. We started with 10 people. And so we're in a little storefront there, praise God, on 8 Mile Road, 15121. Last I saw it was a flower shop. I don't know what it is today, but. Hallelujah. No, last time I saw some little church, that, some little church that moved in there now. Amen. They had a sign as big as the building. Good Lord. <laughs> I saw it. That's right. <laughs> Amen. And so we had outgrown our little storefront, and I'm looking for our very first building, and I'm praying. And I, there's a realtor. This realtor is trying to get me to come see this building in Ferndale. Now, back then, Ferndale was not a place that was welcoming to people who have suntanish skin the color of mine I wasn't interested in going to Ferndale I wasn't even looking for Ferndale not only that a great deal of my little congregation at that time used public transportation the highway there now didn't exist then so people would take the bus and they'd have to walk a mile or more amen to get to the church I surely wasn't interested in going 
over there. It made no sense to me. So I kept looking. I kept trying to find, you know. And he, and he keep, keep telling me about this building over here. Finally, just to shut him up. It was a couple of months. Just to shut him up. All right. I go look at it. All right. So as soon as I pull up in the parking lot, I heard the Lord say, this is the building. What? See, it made no sense to my head whatsoever. <laughs> no, no. We wound up having a miracle happen there. On the last day, we were supposed to close supernaturally. We closed that building, hallelujah, and outgrew it in 13 months. The will of God was different than my mind. I'm talking to somebody. But I was praying, seeking the Lord. I just didn't want, the Lord was, was trying to use someone. Hallelujah. Because I wouldn't listen. I'd already set my mind on where I was not going to go. And let me tell you, people can get so hard-headed, you can try and talk to them, they won't even let you get the first word out their mouth. As soon as they know you're going that direction, well, God's smart, so he'll go around and find some another way. Aren't you glad God is merciful? So he found another way to get to me, praise God. And I eventually got there, and we, that was our very first building. Praise his holy name. Some of you here remember the whole Redford situation. Amen. We eventually moved to the east side, and then after we all grew at that east side church, then we, we were about to, we're looking for a building large enough to accommodate us, another building. Uh, amen. And I'm in prayer. Oh, that word. I'm in prayer seeking the Lord about, you know, where, where are we going to move the church to this time? And now there was a building in Redford that was at the time the largest church building in southeast Michigan at the time. Amen. Uh, and the church was occupied. There was a church was in it. I didn't know the pastor. I didn't know they had a new pastor. They had a new one. I didn't know the old one. Well, it's a new one. Amen. They had a new pastor in there, a young guy. Amen. And I'm praying about this issue. And I heard the Lord say, go over there to see them. Meet with the pastor. Tell him, this church, in essence, this church doesn't belong anymore to your church. It belongs to Word of Faith. And you go build on land that you own. Now, I knew nothing about the business of that church. Amen. I had never even, I, well, I think we may have been there once to their school to try and put, no, that was later? Okay. I'm asking her to make sure I got it right. Okay, but I had never been there even yet. And I sure didn't know anybody in it, and I sure didn't know the church's business. I heard the Lord say that, and I said, Lord, you can't come to some pastor, tell him, this is my church. <laughs> Bye. Go build on what you trying to do, get me arrested? What you doing? So, so I, I didn't just up and do it either. It took me several days to reconcile that. But what we read, the Lord spoke, then an action is required behind it. So, I mean, I, I made sure I knew it was God talking, you know. So, so I made the appointment. I went over there. Most of you have heard the story. Praise God. TV audience have not But... Amen. I eventually wind up in front of the pastor at his desk. And he's, he's talking to me about, because I was on Detroit City Council at the time, and he, he's talking to me about, you know, this good stuff I had done, the councilman and all that, you know, and I'm thinking, yeah, you compliment me now. You wait to hear what I'm about to say, though. You ain't going to be complimenting me long. <laughs> so finally, and then, of course, he tells this story when they dedicate their building when they do build and dedicate that building and they invited me out for the dedication and then told his side, which was a little different than my side, because his side was he already knew the Lord spoke to him and told him, but he didn't tell me. So he let me stew. I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there. I'm like trembling. I mean, you don't tell somebody. I mean, you think somebody can walk in here and tell me? Amen. This 110-acre site don't belong to you. It belongs to so-and-so church. You know, I'd be like, I love you in Jesus' name. Uh, let, me, let me call my security get you out of here. <laughs> That's, what That's what I'm thinking, man. They're going to haul me out of here, right? So 
I'm sitting there. And finally he says, well, so uh, all right, what, what, what can I do for you? Now, see, I told you, when he tells a story later, okay, he never told me until a dedication Sunday. And just, be, just before I spoke, he stood up and he said, let me tell y'all my side of the story. I could have killed him. I was so, <laughs> what? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm sitting there. He said, all right, so what can I do for you? And I'm saying, oh, Lord. I couldn't even look at the man. I looked down, looked down at the carpet. I said, I was praying the other day. Yes. And I heard the Lord say something to me. Yes. <laughs> well, your church is to go build on land that you own. And this church belongs to the word of faith. And then inside I went. Because <laughs> I expected my reputation was about to be ruined. And he said, well, you know what? That's right. We are going to go build. Let, that's right. Let's go build on land that we own. They sold the building to us. They built on land that they own, but out there on 274, 275. Hearing. I'll tell you another one. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, so after we get this Redford building, we share the building with them. Hallelujah. They were a predominantly Caucasian church. We were a predominantly African-American church, although both churches have people of different races in them. Hallelujah. But that was a big deal back then. The Detroit News of Free Press, forget which one, the Detroit News of Free Press ran a story on the front page above the fold. That's, that's serious. Black and white have church together. Wasn't that a good story? And wrote a story about us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we share with them why they're building. It's going to take two years. So we're, still, we're sharing the building together. Finally, they get theirs built. I'm looking forward to being able to have my own office. Because I let him stay in his. So I just kidnap a classroom. Amen. Make an office out of it. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to finally where the faith has the site to ourselves. We're going to buy up everything around it. We're going to do all this stuff. Amen. And then the Lord says to me, go on down here to this side here. <laughs> and the Lord said. I said. Buy it with what? <laughs> we spent all our money with that reference building. <laughs> with what? Now faith comes by what? And what? Yeah. So I have to decide to believe with the head and receive with the heart. Amen. So I came on over here. Amen. Never forget the day. I came over here and went, to, went into the room with upstairs, which is now my office. Went to that room, and the, the folks who own the facility, they, they're all around the table. And I walked in there, and the guy says, you ought to keep public. I said, yes. He said, you're the man I'm supposed to sell this to. I said, I'm the man. I ain't got no money. But I didn't tell him that. <laughs> it's all tied up down that record. I don't. And besides, even if we got whatever it is where you could get for record, it wouldn't touch what it cost to get this. hearing, but I got a word from God about the matter. So we're talking about how important getting the word of God is about a matter. Amen. Because all the other stuff, receiving, believing, speaking, acting, all the miracle stuff only happens after first seeking God enough to hear. Putting your head on a side. I didn't say get stupid. Hallelujah. You don't need a voice from heaven to tell you get out of the way of that 18 wheeler coming down the road. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't need a voice from heaven walking around. I'm listening, Lord. Like y'all do with your cell phone. Bang! 
<laughs> See people driving doing that, weaving all over the road, you know. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> so make a long story short, praise God. They cut the price on this deal. Seventeen corporations and the city tried to buy it. Amen. We negotiated in secret. The city didn't find out we had it until it was on the, in the newspaper. The, the mayor was angry with me. Really angry with me. Amen. He owned the restaurant back in them days. I went down. The Lord told me. I heard, heard the Lord say, go down to his restaurant. And sit. Just sit there. So I went down to the, the mayor's restaurant, sat there. I saw him when he came in. He came in the door, saw me, and went the other direction. I just sat there. I, he, I must have sat there an hour or more. I just sat there. Finally, he came in, and he plops down on the chair in front of me. He said, all right, you win, we lose. And I said, it wasn't about winning and losing. I said, this was God's place. This land has been in the service of God before Southfield became a city. And God wanted to stay that way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now I tell you these things because when you read these things in the Bible, well, that's the Bible. That's Peter. That's Paul. That's Ananias. This is Detroit. <laughs> but I tell you these things to tell you that's how we still do stuff today. Yeah. I still pray. We still listen. And sometimes I got to put my head on the side. Because sometimes the Lord tells me to do stuff, and I'll be like, wait a minute, Lord, you seen the bottom line? And I know my account going to say something to me, but <laughs> at least he's going to remind me of what we got. Hello, somebody. Amen. But the question is, what did the Lord say about the matter? When the Lord says something, amen, because you heard him. Now when you add receive it, Believe it, speak it, and act like a soul. What comes behind it? Miracles. I close with this because I'm out of time, and I just scratched the service. I got a whole lot more on this subject. So, you know, uh, we negotiated with these folks here, amen, and we wound up acquiring this facility. A pastor calls to come see me over in Redford, in my office. So he comes over, he sits in the chair in front of me. Never met him before. The Assembly of God pastor. Amen. And he says to me, I was praying the other day. I was like, you know, praise the Lord. And he said, you know, we, we were looking to move. I said, hmm, praise the Lord. He said, and the Lord told me to tell you something. Now I set up now. Uh-huh. The Lord told me to tell you that this church belongs to us and no longer to you. And you go build on land that you own and you are sitting in the building we built on land that we own. And I, I started laughing. God, you got a sense of humor. And we sold that land to them, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Detroit World Out. So when God does something, it never just blesses you. When the Lord's speaking something, it's always at least at minimum a twofer. You'll get blessed. Somebody else will get blessed. Stand up with me, praise God. I'm just getting started with this. And in the next lesson, we're going to talk about really how to hear. How to put yourself in position to hear. Praise God. How to discern the difference between God speaking to you and Satan. But I can't do all this in one session. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise God. But if you are a believer, do I have any believers in here? God is making his will. He has done it in the past. And he's doing it now. And he will do it in the future. He that comes to God not only believe that he is now but that he will reward you in the future as well. 
and he will make known to you, praise God, his choice. Now, you may not want to hear his choice because he may tell you he wants you to move somewhere. He may tell you he wants you to give something. He may tell you he wants you to help somebody. He may tell you he wants you to bless his, your enemy. The Lord's even done that with me. You've heard me tell that story. The Lord, the Lord's had me, praise God. Go and bless my enemy financially. Pray for him. Tell him I love you. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost told me that. I would have never done that. I wouldn't even have went over to where they were. I was done with them. I was done with them. And if I did see them, I had to watch myself that I didn't become a not acting Christian. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Anybody been here? The Lord said to me. Satan will never tell you to bless your enemy. He will not tell you to do good to those who use, now I was used, who will use you despitefully. I knew that was God talking to us. I was like, I said, Lord, you, you, you don't gone too far asking me to do that. Hello, somebody. Go over there, give them money, hold and hug their neck and tell them I love them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard him say that. Then I followed it up. I did what he said. Now, again, it took me a couple days to reconcile. Because my flesh did not want to obey. It's a simple message. Look at your neighbor and say, don't never listen to your flesh. Tell them, listen to your spirit. See, my flesh wanted to fight. My flesh wanted to hit them in the mouth. Knock them down. Get a good stomp in there. Real good. Right? That's what my flesh wanted to do. Don't tell me you ain't been there. Put your hand up. Come on. So sure no. That's what my flesh wanted to do, especially since somebody's close to me. Hmm? But then the Lord said, then when I obey what God said, hallelujah, we had a miracle. It's how we got our first building. So hearing from God is the key to operating in faith. The Lord may ask you to step way out there. He may ask you to step way out. See, now you've heard me talk about it a million times, but it was a big issue for me to leave IBM with an infant baby. Didn't know it, but a pregnant wife. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To leave this company at the time, which was Big Blue. That was creme of the creme place. Ben, you couldn't, you couldn't get into IBM. People had to bring you in. Come on, somebody. Back in them days, that was a big thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To leave. It was big. And then I had thousands of dollars of debt. That's a big thing. And when the Lord said that that day, he said, leave me. I be him. <laughs> now, I was prepared to do it because I'm going to go to another school, I'm thinking. But after I organized things. Y'all will not obey God because you haven't had the chance yet to organize according to your schedule. Oh, I don't know why the Lord had me saying all this. None of this was in the message at all. Hallelujah, somebody. But for me to organize it and make this thing done in an organized way, he said, quit, leave, go down there now. Church people told me to my face, you're a fool. They told me to my faith that I was a fool. Family didn't understand. But, amen? I get it. I understand too. It, made, it didn't make no sense 
looking at it, it didn't make any sense except it was the Holy Ghost said. But man, when I graduated from Bible school, all them bills were paid off supernaturally. I became debt free. God sent me back to Detroit, put me in full time ministry. Amen. Well over four decades later, I hear I still am. Praise God. And now the build of my name. Hallelujah. All came from hearing. Now, how many of you would like to be like that? Pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment, please. Yes, Lord, yes. I'm at high. Yes, say no. Oh. Yeah, yeah, ma. Uh huh. Yeah, yes, say ma. Ha, ha, ha. Oh. Yep. Yep. I hear the Spirit say this. For I have spoken to you time and time again of things concerning your body. I have spoken to you about, yes, I want you to eat these things and leave these alone. I've spoken to you about your health and I've spoken to you about your wealth. I've spoken to you about those who have used you and I've spoken to you about things that I've asked you to do. Yes, some have heard and have done, and the blessings have come. And yet so many have refused to do the things I've told them to do, and they made excuses, and they said, No, it must not be the thing that I should do. But know this, say of God, if you were here, my voice, and act therein, you'll see. My blessings in the end will come to thee. It'll cause you to live longer, yes, and be healthier too and be wealthy and full and blessed and the enemy will be disappointed too. He will be upset because you'll see walking in my way and my anointing provides protection for you, don't you see? Spend the time with me and listen to me. That's what the Holy Ghost said. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Again, the Lord's telling me to tell somebody. And you will have to set your head aside. If you're going to do big things for God, you have to be willing, praise God, to step out in big things. Make sure it's God. But when you know, you know, but it's hard to reconcile. But when you know, I've been here. I know what I'm talking about. I've lived this. But when you know that you know something is God, this is where faith starts. Faith is not so much about trying to receive money and health and healing. Those things, they're, they're, they're things that are legitimate to believe for. But what faith is really about, faith is about trusting God with just everything. It's about, praise God, small things and big things. It's about, praise the Lord, not being moved by what you see, but instead being moved by what you believe and allowing what you believe after you heard from God to be what moves your feet. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord makes a way for those who will obey. Every head bowed, please. Every eyes closed in prayer. I took 15 minutes extra but I feel led of the Lord to do so. Every head's bowed. Every eye's closed in Jesus' name. I feel the Lord leading me now, praise God, not to minister to the lost right now. There are a number of you, we're going to be able to hear a little later today, and I'm going to tell the viewing audience this too right now. So those of you who wish to give or sign off and all that, but you might want to listen to this. Amen. There are some in you, the Spirit of God specifically speaking to, about a move to make. You know that you know that you know it's God Almighty, but you're afraid to make it. 
And I understand. I've been here too. You're afraid to make it because you just can't see. How is this going to turn out good for me? Come up here. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I already see why the Lord had this message. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. Glory to God. There are a number of you. Thank you. Pray in the Holy Ghost if you're not coming. Don't spectate. Participate. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. When you get up here, lift your hands to God and you bow your head. Don't be looking around. I'm telling people who know. You ain't trying to find out. You know. You know what God said about it. Whole different thing when you know. You know that you know. Glory to God. You know that you know. Praise God. The biggest failure, in my opinion, in the body of Christ is people understanding their assignment. In other words, God has spoken to them and they don't do it. That's the biggest fear in the body of Christ. There are more people in the wrong place doing the wrong thing at the wrong time this very thing. Right here, hear it. Praise God. They don't want to hear. Now, I said close your eyes before God. I don't want you looking at me. I want you to focus. Listen to your spirit, to the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Now, with, I hear the Lord also saying, now, there's some of you, you're saying, but Lord, I can't do this unless other people obey. He may be telling you to do certain things, but there are other people that have to be involved in that. Amen. That's not your business. Your business is you make yourself completely, totally available. The rest of it is God's business because they have to listen to God too. Amen. And God will have mercy on them for a time just like he'll have mercy and has had mercy where you are concerned. Give you time. Amen. From then on, when God sees your heart and knows that your actions would move immediately if given the opportunity, he'll, he'll count it to you as though it's already done. Are you praying in the Holy Ghost, church? Are you praying in the Holy Ghost? Praise God. Now lift those hands high unto God Almighty. Amen. Say this to him, amen. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I repent. Forgive me for not being totally obedient. I may not understand. I may not know how. But that is not my business. That is your business. So I roll this on to you. I thank you, Lord. It is an honor to be asked by you to do anything. I'm so honored. I'm so honored. I will hear. I will obey. In Jesus' name. Now begin to worship him right now. You are his servant. You are his child. Some of you in the viewing audience, you're doing the same thing. Worship him, praise him right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hear and obey. Hear and obey. You don't need the second step. You need to listen to me right now. You need this step. Obey. Praise God. This is a heart thing first. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Nothing between you and God. Now, some of you in the audience, you didn't come, but you're supposed to be up here. Amen. And everyone lift your hand to God Almighty. And everyone thank the Lord that he honored you, to call, that he called you, he saved you, he's protected you, he's healed you, he's delivered you. In other words, he's been good to you. Oh, give him praise and glory and honor. Oh, there should be some praise and worship in here. There ought to be some glory and honor. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise and worship and adore and magnify you. We glorify your holy name. We glorify your holy name. We glorify your holy name. 
We glorify your holy name. Now as you go back to your seat, praise him and thank him. He's forgiven you and cleansed you. Amen. Hallelujah. You can go back to your seat, those standing up here. Amen. Praise God. Everybody keep praying in the Holy Ghost. The Lord's doing something special today. Thank you, Jesus. He's ministering to people. Glory to God. I saw myself laying hands on you. You know, sometimes how the Lord will speak to people. Amen. With me sometimes. He will show me something about a service before I get there. And he will show me doing it. Sometimes he'll let me know why. Sometimes he won't. But I'm going to do what I saw. So lift your hand before God Almighty. Yes. Amasaha. <laughs> yeah, whatever you need, the Lord said, when my man lays hands upon you, the anointing shall increase. You'll see things will then be. <laughs> so rejoice about your future. Because <laughs> it's wonderful through me, saith the Lord. Glory to God. That's what the Holy Ghost said. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, we worship and praise and adore. We magnify and glorify. You know, the enemy been fighting you all along, trying to keep you from God's will. So what? That's what he's supposed to do. But guess what? He's under our feet. Did we not sing that we had the victory today? Do we not have that blood bought victory? Yes. Thank God for victory. Hallelujah in advance. You see, thanking God for victory is that second part of Hebrews 11, 6. You must believe that he is. But also, he's a rewarder. So thank God for future victory right now. Come on, do it. Who said church had to be out at 1 o'clock? Thank God for future victory. Glory to come. Got victory in the future. I got victory next month and victory next year. Hallelujah. And victory next decade. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Then there are some in here. Jesus is your Lord. And then there are some, Jesus is not your Lord. There are some, you are born again, but you're out of fellowship with God. You ain't been listening to God. But he wants you to come back to him right now. Then there are some of you, you're not born again. You never made Jesus Lord of your life. God's been talking to you, though. Amen. And he brought you here today, not by accident. He brought you to the screen, not by accident. Hallelujah. But today for you to get into God's choice for your life. If you're not born again, you're out of fellowship with God right now, I want to pray for you. Come on up here. Come now, praise God. In Jesus' name. Step out of the aisle. Amen. God's not going to grab you by the nap of the neck. He's not going to drag you to the front. He's not going to throw you on the ground. Come because you want to. Come because you want to obey him. Come because in your heart you love him. Come now. Come. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come. Come. Praise God. Come on, ha, ha. Yay, so more. Well, see, you heard and you obeyed. That's why the blessings are come to you today. All heads bowed, including yours. All heads bowed here in the auditorium. Those you standing here at the front, lift one hand towards heaven if you're able. Congregation, do the same as you stretch your hands towards these beautiful people. Those of you in the viewing audience, wherever you are, you do the same. Let's all pray together. Dear Heavenly Father. Dear in Jesus, name, in Jesus' name, I do believe, I do believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is, the is the Son of God. I believe he died for me. 
He hung on the cross for me. He bore my sins for me. He was put in a grave for me. He rose from the grave for me. He's alive now. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I accept you as my Savior and as the master of my life. I repent of sin. Lord, I'm sorry. I return back to you now. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for having mercy with me. Heaven is my home. Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for these men and women who pray with me now. Open their eyes further that they may learn how to walk in these things, become more solid in the things of God, and I pray that you use them to your glory to reach others in their lives. May their families be saved, their loved ones be saved, their friends be saved, and they all go to heaven at the right time together. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. That was such a powerful service. God truly knows what we need and when we need it. And I know that everyone out there was blessed by the ministry of that word. Now, I want to say congratulations to everyone that made a decision about Jesus Christ. This is the best decision of your life. And right now on the screen, there's some important information that we ask you to follow. Fill it out in its entirety, and we'll send you a gift that will help you with the next step. Thanks everybody for joining and we'll see you at the next service.